Good morning, good afternoon, depending where you are. Uh, I am Stéphane Rog, attaché for science and technology at the French Embassy uh, in Washington, D.C. And on behalf of my colleagues from the cultural office, my colleagues from the scientific office, uh, I will introduce our panel today where there will be, we will discuss the role of science to develop sustainable agriculture sector. Uh, Earth Day is an opportunity to highlight uh, our planet challenges and uh, among all the challenges that we are facing is global warming. According to the IPCC report, the agricultural sector contributes up to 24% of global greenhouse gas emission. Besides that, there are several organizations like the International Platform for Biodiversity and uh, Ecosystem uh, Services, IPBS, or as well as IUCN or WWF. All these organizations report that biodiversity is under pressure. As an example, they observe an astonishing 50% decrease of all insects since 1970. In the meantime, intensive agriculture models and white pesticide use have become controversial and suspected to damage our health or environment. Uh, decarbonization of the agriculture sector is therefore perceived as one of the issue. Different soil and land management, lower or no pesticide use, innovative livestock management, could contribute to improve our landscape, our environment, and our health. Ag Agroecology offers new opportunity and is presented as part of the solution. It is an integrated approach that simultaneously applies ecological and social uh, concepts and principles to the design and management of food and agriculture uh, systems. Farmers, the agriculture, the agro-industry, but also the research community are all concerned and key players for most of these solutions. So this is why today the French-American panel discussion objective is to highlight the role of science toward a more sustainable agriculture sector with example of current research project and the perspective of impact of the society. This panel discussion um, will resonate with the screening of the French documentary uh, movie, which has been available and uh, which was made available by the Institut Francais. Uh, the title is Histoire de la Plaine, the story of the Plaine, uh, directed by the French director uh, Christine Seguesi. Uh, this movie is, for those who did not see it, is still available on our website. Uh, but I would like to take very shortly the chance to mention uh, uh, today uh, all the initiatives that we have had, some of the initiatives we have had with, at the French Embassy, uh, taking the occasion of the Earth Day 2021 edition. I would like to mention three examples of, the, of programs we have had. Um, last month, for example, we had an expert panel to discuss mega fires a uh, few days ago on the 19 of April, we co-organized our a webinar in partnership with the Wilson Center, where the, it was discussed, it was about ocean, to discuss the turning of climate change problem into a solution for uh, ocean. Um, also, I would like to mention um, a symposium which is coming, which we should have beginning of June in partnership with the Global Council for science and environment to discuss university research institutions involvement to lower their carbon uh, carbon um, footprint and uh, as well as their uh, environmental footprint so this is coming stay tuned uh, but now i would like to leave the floor to to karen i would like to thank you karen because you accepted to to moderate this panel uh, karen 
you are uh, Thomas Haas Professor in Sustainable Food System at the University of New Hampshire. You focus mainly on resource matching, board development, and strategic planning for health and equity initiatives. Part of your involvement also is to promote ties between University of New Hampshire and the New England food system. But you claim yourself as a professor of practice in contact with communities, uh, being involved for social justice. Uh, you also serve in uh, several national and regional uh, committees. I won't mention all of them because it would be too long. I rather uh, leave you the floor. Before leaving, you, bringing uh, the floor to you, I would like to invite our listeners that to, to remind you that um, you are. It's possible for you to ask to have questions using your our Q and A uh, button. So I wish you happy Earth Day. And Karen, I leave you the floor. Thank you so much, Stefan, and, and thank you for the invitation to be with you here today on Earth Day. So happy Earth Day, everyone. I bring you those humble greetings from the University of New Hampshire, Durham, New Hampshire, in the United States, and all over the world, we are celebrating Earth Day. And today marks the 51st anniversary of Earth Day, and millions of people are mobilizing for the environment, from grassroots voices to world leaders, the world attention is on the fight for Earth on Earth Day. And we commit to fight for the planet, planet Earth. And the theme is restore our Earth. And so we must also restore and renew our integral relationships with people and people to the land. And we all have been reading the news here in the United States where we had the trial of Derek Chauvin and he was convicted. And yesterday, no, it actually was Tuesday, President Biden wrote that this is a giant step forward for the nation in the fight against systemic racism. But he declared that that is not enough. So as we celebrate Earth Day, this Earth Day, let us also celebrate a new day of healing and restoration while fighting for both people and our planet. We are so honored and thrilled today, as we have with us today, two of our renowned and beloved scientists, advocates for the science and agriculture. And we have Dr. Laurent Kernak. He is the chair of Agroecology Working Group of the French National Research Institute for Sustainable Development here in France. And we have Dr. Michelle Schroeder Marino, who is interim director and assistant director of education programs, Center for Environmental Farming Systems. They're over at the North Carolina State University, Raleigh, North Carolina. So today we will have a discussion on the role of science to develop agricultural sector. And there was a film, as Stefan just mentioned, uh, addressing the issues of agricultural practices in Argentina. And what we always understand is that uh, what happens in Argentina is a, a sample, uh, an example, of a mirror of what is happening in many of our countries across the world. So we will explore the challenges and opportunities presented in that film, looking at a lens of both our France and United States partners. And we hope to thread the science, the knowledge, and the lived experience through the demonstrating both our intentionality our internationality, our intersectionality, and our interdependence. And we look at that as infinite power for change as we collectively hold the science in the center. So I'm going to start with a few questions. And as, as Stefan said, there'll be a point in this where we'll have the questions, which actually my questions are gonna come after because I want to invite both Dr. Kornack and Dr. Schroeder Marino to share a little bit, any reflections of the film and also weaving their work through that. Then there'll be the questions that I will ask of them and then there'll be an open Q&A to come from you. So that will be the flow from this moment on. So we'd like to start with Dr. Current. 
If you would like to start and share your, your story, your work, and if there is anything you can link to Argentina and theirs, which again, we talked about, there's always the intersectionality. So I invite you, Dr. Karnak, to begin to share your work. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Karen, for the introduction and uh, happy Year's Day to everybody as well. Uh, I've prepared a, a few a few slides that might uh, that I will show uh, quite swiftly and might help locate the, the, the areas of intervention, uh, I mean, and also the, the views that I can share with, I may share with you uh, toward the interconnection between sustainability and science, sustainability issues and science. So uh, I doing that instantly, normally you should here see my screen and then I okay do you see my uh, my my screen introductory slide okay that's fine so um, so we we are today uh, discussing around this topic so my, my, my purpose is not to give an academic talk <laughs> it's only to to show a few hints a few aspects that can they can, that can be used as a starter for exchange and reflection. So as Karen said, the things that are occurring in Argentina with massive conversion of uh, local practices to, to uh, industrial uniformization in terms of crops, mechani large mechanization, large use of uh, inputs and pesticides, etc., is something that, that is occurring in many parts of the world with concentrating of uh, of farms, concentrating of ownership, etc. And that's also something that has occurred in the past. For instance, uh, you know, areas like the peanut basin of uh, Africa, where the massive deployment of uh, monocrops has conducted to one of the parts of the problem that we observe today in terms of degradation of soils and uh, wells and uh, human conditions. Uh, so, uh, so as Karen said, just to present myself shortly, so I'm uh, part from the IRD, which is a French Research Institute for Sustainable Development, and uh, which is a, a multidisciplinary organism, not working only in agriculture, but in agriculture among other sciences, and uh, essentially promoting fair and co-constructed uh, research and training partnerships with our colleagues in the South. Uh, just to, to, to give one of the possible illustration and one of the most known, uh, most known of, uh, of them uh, of uh, sustainability is uh, that donut. Uh, that donut is maybe the, <laughs> the, is the famous donut, it's maybe the only donut that is good for health and welfare, but <laughs> uh, so it just uh, delineates the area between between uh, which the essential needs for uh, human are met, while the ecological limits of the planet are not uh, uh, broken. And uh, of course, in, in the center of the donut are the essential things we need, water, food, health, education, peace, social equity, gender equity, etc. And the the global planet limits uh, that are uh, under uh, under threat, like uh, climate, ocean uh, pollution of uh, waters and air, the the loading of nitrogen in forests in the nature, the biodiversity loss, etc. The things that Stefan talked about, and uh, the 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 ideal. Um, development of uh, societies should somewhere um, uh, circulate between these two limits and uh, which is both safe, uh, just and uh, and give the ground for regenerative and distributive eco economy. But the current situation is not exactly like that and, and rather resemble that 
where uh, most of the limits are, uh, the earth limits uh, are, uh, are well uh, broken, considering climate change, we have biodiversity, land use, etc., etc. And uh, where the social demands are not met in many aspects. And if you look at all of these components, biodiversity, land conversion, nitrogen, climate change, water, food, health, uh, social uh, equity, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all in, I'll say, in the vast majority of all these components, the the agricultural sector is a key player. So the 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 the, the trick is to 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 find ways of uh, turning our agricultural sector in a, in a sustainable and uh, uh, vir virtuous uh, way. So uh, Stefan talked about agroecology. So just, I will not of course uh, speak about all these uh, aspects, but in fact, the agroecology has uh, different dimensions, which uh, depend on the, the people who are speaking about it. It's a scientific discipline, the, the understanding of ecological um, interactions in the, in the cropping systems, in the agricultural systems, and uh, uh, tackling the, the, the agricultural landscapes are as object of ecology. It's also a practical thing, the development of agricultural practices, which rely on these, agro, agro, on these ecological equilibria rather than on external inputs, so practices that that take care of this uh, knowledge, that uh, take account of this knowledge, but it's also a social movement, sorry it's still in French, <laughs> a social movement uh, in, that uh, as the, the, these, uh, the turning into, uh, putting into practice this must also take into account of course uh, equity uh, gender issues and and all the, all the things that make the 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 practice not only technically and eco and environmentally uh, sustainable and suitable but also socially and economically uh, sustainable and uh, well just this uh, timeline is, is just to show that these, uh, these various exceptions have been enriched during the, uh, the 20th century uh, progressively and uh, to, towards um, incorporating higher and higher levels of, of complexity. And now, the, well, this is one of the current views of agroecology, but uh, they, the, the idea is that you cannot uh, tackle agroecology without uh, gathering and encompassing all uh, a variety of components, biophysical components such as uh, recycling, efficiency of crop, of course, resilience of, of crops towards uh, climate, uh, preserving and, use, and making use of diversity, but also taking into account uh, social and, um, and, um, and uh, cultural components. Uh, so you, you have to, to incorporate in the design uh, the, the question of responsible governance, human and social values, tradition, cultu cultural and food care tradition, and uh, very important, the co-creation of uh, sharing and knowledge. That is not only have a technocratic view of developing uh, innovation, but also uh, basing and, and uh, basing one of the part of the of the a, a very important part of the of the design on the local and indigenous knowledges, which is a, a strong component of the agroecological approach. And uh, the idea is to build a circular and solid uh, economy. And maybe what the essential point is here is at the center here is the question of synergy. These things are not op uh, are not opposed; they are syn synergistic. And this is uh, the, the kind of, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, post, post position that, uh, uh, that defines agroecology. So uh, just to, to be brief, uh, agroecology is not uh, 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 all-in-one 
uh, way, uh, I, I would say it's not a recipe. It's not uh, something that you can apply uh, in every place, everywhere. It's, it has to be uh, devised locally according to uh, environmental and social conditions. It, the, it's, the, therefore, it's not a kind of a standard way of making agriculture. But it's rather a pathway, a transition, a transition pathway that is not industrial agriculture, of course, that uh, uh, the idea is to reduce uh, inputs and build knowledge to relocalize and de diversify productions. But it is not, as it's often mis uh, mistold, it's not uh, basic subsistence agriculture. Uh, an, agri an agriculture which leads poverty with no inputs is not agroecology. It's rather for, for this kind of uh, situation, the, the pathway is to, ba based on, on knowledge, diversify, connect to markets, and then uh, go towards uh, 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 an ideal which is not a, a farming system, a standard farming system, but an appropriate farming system with enough diversity to make it resilient and to make it uh, efficient in terms of satisfying food needs and wealth needs for the farmers. Okay, just uh, one one minute about the uh, the um, the the things. I'm uh, I'm doing uh, in science, so I, I work in a soil and agroecosystems lab, and essentially we are uh, uh, studying how soil organic matter, soil organism, plants interact in order and uh, and develop natural cycles of carbon and of nutrients, and these cycles. Uh, of course, are under uh, impact of climate change, of land use, of cropping practices. And the idea is to propose or, or evaluate levers for innovation that can lead to, be, to enhance plan, plant production while preserving carbon sequestration, nutrient cycles, and soil quality, and all that to meet sustainable development goals. So, to, 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 of course, this biophysical uh, core of the work is not all. And as I said, when we are engaged in projects as scientists, even if we uh, essentially, in, our, in my lab, work at, the, at this scale of agronomy, ecology, physiology, process analysis, we are connected with uh, people from other kinds of science, geography, social, human sciences. And in the current development of our project, we also involve local populations to have a, a multi-scale and integrated view of the kind of the drivers that uh, go toward the success or not of an agroecological innovation. Here in this kind of project, we are essentially uh, focusing on agroforestry in West Africa. Uh, and uh, just to summarize, so my, uh, my view as a, start, as a starting point for science co contribution to policies for agroecology or sustainable agriculture and food systems is first at the grassroots building knowledge and which is important to identify system drivers and their impacts both on the biophysical, ecological point of view, and also on the social cultural point of view. It's also to participate in change and innovation. Of course, the idea is to, to, to engage into co-conception of innovation so that it is locally sound, participatory, inclusive. And of course, once innovation is proposed, it's important to evaluate and monitor the changes and impacts it uh, triggers, and this in a multi-dimensional way. And of course, based on this, to inform policy, to perform advocacy and proper communication. Okay, thank you very much for attention. Thank you, Dr. Karan.
Uh, here, you were talking about so many different things. I just wanted to lift up some of the words that I heard. Local, social, pathway, transition, diversity, and and dive. I think it was it was demystify. I love that. The mm. diversity and demystify. And then it was also the ecology was connecting with local population and the intersection there. And sharing the knowledge, being the knowledge, the system drivers, seeking those that will be engaged in this. And the co-creation piece is what really is a, a new way of thinking, that it is not just one body that's thinking this and doing this, but it's co-created. And that's a new way of thinking. That's the innovation there. So thank you for sharing that. So now Dr. Schroeder Moreno, please share. We wanna hear what is happening in the United States and North Carolina. Well, thank you very much. I um, just wanna say how much I appreciate um, being part of this. It's such a pleasure um, with Laurent and uh, Karen. Thank you very much for Dr. Spiller for um, helping moderate. Um, and happy Earth Day, everyone. Uh, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about um, perhaps myself and the organization I work with, um, just to give you context and a little bit about what we do. So I'm a professor of agroecology and uh, the co-interim director of the Center for Environmental Farming Systems in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I have these pictures up because I like to show that we do everything from soil health, um, managing sustainable production systems, um, missing the animals, I realize, I'll show you one later, and to the people, um, this intersectionality of soils to healthy food to healthy people and communities is really important in our work. Um, I also appreciate uh, Laurent doing such a wonderful job in defining agroecology, which means I um, don't have to do that, but I will add a, a piece to that. It is a disciplinary, interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary focus for research. Um, and as well, it has the social component, I would say, but it's also an emerging way we're educating our new food system leaders um, that may be on the farm and may be working in education and policy. And that's where I focus in, um, in education. And I wanted to just to provide you, I, I know with um, when I hear different um, kind of talks and I may be coming from different places, I always like to know the context of where the person is coming from. Um, again, I'm in North Carolina, which is the southeastern part of the United States. And we have a great diversity of agricultural uh, products, one of the most diverse in the nation. And it really has everything to do with our topography and climate. Um, we have the Appalachian Mountain Range in the west going to the rolling hills of the Piedmont to the coastal system. So from fisheries, forestry, and all the agricultural products in between. Our Center for Environmental Farming Systems is located out in the east, so going towards the coast. Um, we are number one in the nation for producing sweet potatoes and uh, tobacco, and second for producing um, hogs, the latter of which has significant environmental challenges, I will say. So the type of agriculture research we do is responsive to the diversity of agriculture food systems in our state and region. Um, what I did want to say um, is not in this is we have a diverse cultural community too. Remember culture is part of agriculture. Um, we have from the native um, homeland of the Cherokee uh, native peoples. Uh, we have the state Lumbee tribe over here towards the eastern part and um, a diversity of rural and urban and um, cultural communities in our state. Our, uh, just real quickly, our Center for Environmental Farming Systems, it's important to um, think about. We are actually three institutions that work together, which provides a lot of opportunity. Um, two universities, I work with NC State and we also have NC a t University, both of which are the main um, universities that focus on agriculture in our state. 
and our Department of Agriculture we work with. We are one of the largest um, centers in the nation, over 2,000 acres, about a little over 800 hectares, um, dedicated to sustainable agriculture research, education, and extension. And there's my, um, we do have animal work too, uh, animals and grazing systems. Um, I think it's always important to kind of think about the mission of an organization that drives our agriculture um, and farming systems, or in food systems research. So we develop and promote just and equitable food and farming systems. I underline that because it's not just the agricultural production research that we do in agriculture, but it is the food system research. And I'll, I'll highlight a little bit of what I mean by that. That conserves natural resources, strengthens our communities, improving health outcomes, and providing economic opportunities, of course, in our state and region. Um, and participating in um, activities like this help us understand kind of the international context of where we are too. So within that intersectionality is really about how we promote vibrant farms, farms that are economically viable, that um, conserve those natural resources and resilient ecosystems, resilience to um, disturbances um, that we are having more of. We are on the East Coast and more of our 100 and 500 year hurricanes or floods are happening quite frequently to give you some context and um, building strong communities and healthy people and of course thriving economies through this integration of research, education and outreach with community and with farmers. Um, at our station, the 800 hectares, we are split up into different um, focal units of research, education, extension. We have a long-term farming systems research. We're able to look in a long-term way. These are now 23 years of different systems where we can look at things like um, uh, impacts of climate change on systems, um, looking at greenhouse gas emissions. We have an organic research unit, mostly dedicated to organic grains, a pasture-based dairy system, pasture-based beef over here, agroforestry, which is um, one of the practices really um, looking at how to mitigate climate change impacts in agriculture, sequester more carbon, especially with perennial species. Small farm is dedicated to more of the vegetable production, small fruits, and an alternative swine unit. If you remember, some of we are, we do have a lot of um, hogs in North Carolina and looking for alternative ways for producers to do them that are um, environmentally, more environmentally sound. But our food system initiatives is very important too. And I put the state of North Carolina because they don't occur in just a place. Um, we work with a lot of community partners in addition, of course, to farmers. And just to name a few of those that are happening currently, I'm gonna start on this end, we work with youth. Um, we work, we have a farm to school program across the state, as well as a farm to early child care. The earlier that we can start with children when they're learning their palates, um, uh, developing their palates um, by age five of tasting local foods um, and providing opportunities for our farmers to also bring local foods to these centers. We have a committee on race and equity in the food system. Um, we look and train, work with communities um, about the challenges we have in race and equity. Um, Karen mentioned that it's not just um, in our greater nation and the challenge we have with systemic racism, it comes in our food system as well. And COVID has really highlighted some of the challenges that we have in our food system. And I would say particularly in our area of the country. We also work with um, sustainable meats. Um, it started with hogs, but also in um, dairy, beef, and chickens from the whole production processing in um, local independent processors to the marketing to the consumer information and demand. We look at farm um, 
uh, uh, food waste at the farm level and alternative markets, and then how community um, can empower and change their own food system. We have a series of different food policy councils throughout the state that then come together and have a state food policy council, and we have a team that leads that. And I was thinking I watched the film um, in uh, about soybeans and um, in Argentina, and I was thinking about the changes in our food system. This is relevant to anywhere in the world that we are, we are seeing this. But the one thing that gives me hope is that we can change these systems for the better as well. And it, it's not just on the back of the producers, but it must also involve the community um, and not just through economic means, but also through our voices and what we, we vote for. And this is one way to do that. Um, this is just to highlight kind of some of the things that we do. We have, um, we bring in technology. So this is some of our um, robots out in the field looking at continuous gas measurements from organic and conventional systems of nitrous oxides and things. This is some of our agroforestry or civil pastoral work integrating animals back in systems, not keeping them separate. We have a strong forestry um, uh, um, agriculture in North Carolina, organic grains and vegetable production systems, looking at how rotations work and how to manage some of the pests in those systems in an integrated way. And then looking at, of course, what we do in education. Um, I lead our um, develop a new agroecology uh, undergraduate bachelor of science program. We have a graduate fellows program internships. Um, we work with youth as well. Um, we want to start them young. We want to see agriculture as part of STEM, science, technology, engineering, math as well. And uh, we uh, uh, work with our community and help them really advocate for the food system that they want. This is one of our food policy councils in Washington, D.C., meeting with one of our representatives. And our newest program, which really came about through COVID, is a farm to senior program addressing food insecurity in the elderly and how to get local foods, understanding the, the different challenges that they may have. So we end with um, maybe a similar donut um, to what Laurent had in this. It is, um, I guess, you know, how we create resilient um, food systems and agriculture is to look at them together. I, I, I think when we talk about agricultural systems, we can't ignore what's happening across processing distribution, how it's received at market, and also the food waste. Um, and we have all of these things that can impact our systems. And I will um, stop sharing so we can turn it over back to Karen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And continue hearing these intersectionality pieces, the multidisciplinary that you're doing there, Michelle, with the farming, with the education, with the community, with even the university really focusing on not just the research, but research to practice and all of the spirits and people that come into that work. Uh, we're talking about the technology. And again, you're, you're speaking about it just as Dr. Karnak did, that it's all intersectional, it's all interdependent, and it's not just one system, it's the systems in community together. So it's a constant thread that you both are sharing with us in terms of what we want to remember about agroecology and the way it works, and the way it works in the system, with the system, and co-creating as much as we can. So both of you spoke about community, community, community engagement, and how it was important in different ways. And I'd love for you to share with us, say a little bit more, and what that might look like in your, your organizations and your place. What does it look like when community is being engaged and brought in and part of the co-creation. And either one of you, <laughs> whoever wants to start first. Uh, go ahead, Brian. Okay, so just a few words. So of course, this is, uh, this is 
this is essential. And uh, so there are many, many different ways of engaging communities uh, in research. Uh, of course, the, the 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 rather ancient view of this is to to when when you go to a place and try to 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 devise the best solutions suited to a, a lot of constraints and a lot of opportunities. You 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 can uh, gather the people around focus groups and uh, and uh, and so uh, uh, work together into. Uh, into getting the, the the right information from the from the ground from the people but the maybe we can go a, a, a bit beyond that this means uh, just not only taking information from the people but involving them into uh, into the action and the and the research and action together so this means uh, uh, being sure that they Participate in the in the in the co-conception of the research, so this is one place. But also to ensure, uh, maybe when it's possible, that they participate actively to the research itself. It means uh, in setting uh, well, maybe trials and fields, uh, field trials so, so in in uh, agricultural uh, in uh, in farmer fields. And that they take care about that they can interact with that that, that they can also uh, evaluate because the third component is not only to 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 design research perform measure impacts but also for the evaluation not only consider the the the, the academic metrics but also the the community uh, apprehensions uh, the the community appraisal of all the things the community evaluation of what is interesting and what is not what, what are the, the 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 opportunities what are the drawbacks of the innovations well okay these are several lines of in in performing research where the community might be uh, directly involved at all stages from the conception to the evaluation yeah yes i was gonna add to that we um our center was formed from an uh, um, advisory group that included farmers. So from the get-go, we had um, farmers asking for this kind of center and this kind of research, and they continue on our board um, as well and help direct our agriculture as well as food systems projects. Um, and in our research, it, it is also many of them are community participatory or on-farm research, because what we do at a station is perhaps a, a different feel than what a producer would do on farm. And so just like Laurent mentioned, um, having them choose and participate in not only you know the research focus itself, but um, the adaptability, because that is really the key. Um, if for new practices to be adopted, the farmers have to have a touch and feel. In my own research, I do more soil health and soil ecology. I also have producers present with me at different um, conferences. I know myself that some of the other producers are more apt to listen to uh, the producers that participated in the on-farm research sometimes than me, so we present together. Um, that also happens. And I would say it even happens in the way we do extension or outreach and education. So I think having student-centered education um, where students are bringing their perspectives and those are valued. I have kids that come from farming backgrounds and kids that don't and are together and, and bringing those perspectives and knowledge as well as what we do with the community. We have what I didn't mention, um, we have a youth uh, food initiative, which is just actually a youth around the state that work in tandem with our food policy councils to make sure that there's a youth voice in there too. Thank you. And what you're also doing in that community engagement are building advocates for science. So they're, they're becoming part of your community and your voice and out there again, advocating wherever they can for more science in our agriculture. So 
that is certainly a way of bringing the community together in the spirit of collaboration, intersectionality. So we're thinking about, oh, gee, the um, thinking about the impact of carbon markets on farmers. We were talking a little bit, some of that came through uh, Dr. Kornack in, in your speaking, and I just wanted to lift that up. If there's anything else you'd like to add, uh, we know that uh, we're thinking about the US Department of Ag carbon banks, $50 billion imagined by the new administration. And what does that look like in both places? What does that look like in the United States? What does that possibility look like in France? In. Um, so thank you. I'll, I'll go ahead and start first. It's I think one what we're very excited about in our current administration is that we're going to have more funding for the actual research for us to understand. Um, I, I, I will say agroecology research has been typically underfunded. Um, so getting at the science of what practices can add and sequester more carbon is important. We do have right now emerging markets, carbon credit markets. Um, I don't know, I don't think they have been adopted uh, as much because they're so new, but I think this is coming. Um, I think what we have to come together in, in the, in the research, the researchers and the science is um, what are the practices? What is the economics of the practice for producers as well? Thank you. Dr. Kornack, would you, do you have anything to, to yeah, add? Maybe, I, I think, it was, well, of course, of the US situation, I'm not much aware of, but uh, uh, yeah, there are many, many different kinds of studies that show the potential of these kind of carbon markets, uh, both in, uh, in Europe, but uh, also in developing countries. Uh, the question, well, there are several questions on how to evaluate or how to redistribute the 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 wealth and etc. and the, the equity of this. Just, so I, I think that obviously that there is an opportunity, but uh, I, I would like to make you know, just a little caution that uh, opportunity is one good thing, but uh, you, we have to be aware of uh, opportunity effects and. Uh, uh, um, controversies and uh, so that if the if carbon is only the focus, if we lose the the focus on the other components of uh, un environmental and social well-being, uh, we might we might go into uh, we, we, well into uh, uh, deadlock practices. So so I uh, so so this is one good component, but must not be, to my opinion, the only focus of. Uh, of uh, for agricultural uh, incentives. Okay, thank you so much. So we have a number of questions here that we want to bring into our dialogue from our our participants, our audience, our our community. And one of them is about how. What are the main challenges to implement agroecology at your level in your prospective countries and institutions? Well, I don't know if we have enough time for that. <laughs> I don't mean to make light of it at all. Um, no, and maybe I can speak from my own perspective. I'm in a crop and soil science department, which is a pretty traditional department at a traditional university for agriculture. And um, it took a long time to establish a agroecology program. I think um, some of the challenges are the perceptions that it would be too radical and um, uh, not economic, doesn't um, only focuses on one particular thing. Um, but I think that when people start to learn about it, it is um, something that we can, I think, bring more people to the table. So I had mentioned that I have a very, I have some traditional agriculture students in my class, as well as more that uh, this is their first agriculture course. Um, and so I think bringing them together in a respectful way and creating an environment where we can delve into the science of the challenges and be honest about those things. At the research level, uh, challenges for, I think, us is um, 
funding can be a, a challenge, although I think we're doing it in innovative ways, um, you know, bringing in the health perspectives, bringing in newer um, uh, uh, types of funding. I think we, we've been successful with that, but need to be creative as well. Mindset, I think, is a big one, though. Yes, Dr. Karnak. Yeah, maybe I will just start by the end of Michelle's great, great intervention. Yes, I think mindset is one of the greatest potential and also one of the one of the greatest limits. Uh, the the the, um, the the needed interconnection, multi uh, ability to 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 exchange with multiple disciplines is not something so straightforward and common in our academic. Uh, uh, I would say uh, culture. <laughs> uh, I think it's the same. Well, in 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 in, in every country. So so this, there is um, an important step in com communication between disciplines, knowledge of each other, and uh, and especially uh, well and uh, coordinating a work group on agroecology in my institute. I know that the the this. Uh, reciprocal uh, knowledge and uh, understanding issue is is one of the biggest. <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, implementation, uh, there, there are okay. It's, it depends uh, from one country to the other. In, in Europe, there, there there is actually in the in the last decades uh, a strong uh, growing of the number of farms that engage into uh, agroecology or components of agroecology. Let's say. And uh, so that the disease has to 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 this has to to do with uh, consciousness, environmental consciousness, social consciousness, but also a good good value for the products coming from agroecology and organic farming also as well. So that there, there are uh, I think some uh, there, there there are some. Uh, some good uh, good background for for growing of agroecological uh, approaches in farming in Europe, uh, but there are also some uh, resistance, <laughs> you know, and lobbying uh, against it. So so it's it's uh, in the, in the southern countries. I, I think the more or less the where, where I work a lot. Um, the this the uh, the the question is often. Uh, uh, a matter of, of connection to, uh, to to knowledge and uh, and minimal inputs because agroecology is not no input at all is is it and uh, and also of course of uh, social um, uh, well so social problems and war problems that we are all aware of uh, that these are ma major major. Uh, Obstacles for uh, agroecological uh, development because agroecology needs to 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 to, uh, <clears throat> to to see on a long term perspective. And when you are not sure to be on the same land uh, next year, when you, you can be expulsed for one reason, or when the the um, the land uh, the land laws are not uh, quite clear when the, you, your if your field can be uh, bought by any company at any moment you are not prone to invest in long term and resident practice and uh, this is often one of the major uh, drawbacks in the in the uh, developing countries thank you so much there's so many questions here and so much so much richness in dialogue. And I'm wondering, I'm just checking in with everyone here. There's a question here I'm certainly wanting to know as, as those in, in academia, you know, how could they adopt and join into the communities for fields of practice? So certainly thinking about that intersectionality there. There's a question here also about doctoral students that are interested in agroecology, how do they train themselves and also innovate in the practice of that? Uh, so we're looking a lot of, of how do we train, how do we in, innovate, how do we bring people in, how do we continue to have that intersectionality? And I'm just wondering, I'm checking in. I know we're getting close to our close time. 
address that? I would just go right ahead, Michelle, and okay. do. <laughs> um, I think the biggest thing is uh, there are some associations internationally and nationally that focus on agroecology um, and um, connecting with those. I would say looking at the, the literature and seeing who's doing what and where. Um, I find that the people working in agroecology and sustainable agriculture are very collaborative and very open. Um, there's no eagles, <laughs> I would say, in my experience, so reaching out to people, especially if you can do it in an area around you or in the same country, to connect that way. And, um, you know, for doctoral students, it's the same, I would say, to get out of your department and out of, even of your institution if you can. Certainly, if there's people in your institution to um, uh, that do this and connect with, but it, it may be going out the traditional way. Thank you. Dr. Karnak, any, anything you'd like to add? No, the, I, I think the, the same way here, but both uh, in the, in the uh, academic sector, uh, research institutes, uh, schools, and so that, uh, also in the professional and NGO sector, there are flourishing initiatives that are, that, uh, that are promoting uh, agroecological approaches. And I think it's quite easy to find the information. Thank you, thank you. Now, I, I always think about this is that when we're doing this work and, and whatever position or role we play, we are all eaters. And so there's a question here, any advice on to help us and to be certain that the food we're buying is being produced following agroecology practices, ethical practices? Any advice do you have, Dr. Karnak and Dr. Schurter Marino? Okay, maybe I, 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 I can start. Uh, well, uh, you know, as for uh, organic or uh, eco-friendly or uh, any kind of product, there, there are some uh, um, organisms that are expert in labeling. Of course, it's, uh, we can, it's, it's, I think it would not be a purpose to, to put a controller <laughs> behind every farmer. It's, 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 it's impossible, but uh, uh, I think that, uh, that there are now in our, at least in, in uh, our northern countries, uh, a network of, uh, of uh, communication, of connection and, and uh, uh, know-how in terms of uh, environmental uh, certification that can be used for, for that. Uh, but uh, uh, one of the difficulties is agroecology is not one given practice it's not uh, it's, it's not uh, like like uh, yeah uh, like a common recipe that everybody uh, should, should uh, apply and so easy to to, to verify it's it's rather uh, uh, an approach a transition uh, a way of uh, of thinking and making evolve the, the system and uh, the, the I, I know that in europe that there is a, a, a strong uh, uh, development of what we call the product uh, environmental footprints uh, approach that means that uh, that the, um, the any kind of product uh, being uh, agricultural or not ca can be uh, qualified in terms of the impact it has on carbon on pollution and, and so on for for this aspect for the other, I, I say but but maybe a transition from uh, PEF <laughs> to pest, including the S of social, would be one of the good options to uh, to to develop uh, a comprehensive uh, label for agroecological approaches. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Thank you. Um, we have in the United States many labels, and as Laurent said, it's not one label for agroecology, because not only is there not one suite of practices, but what we do in North Carolina would be quite different than what we do in uh, Uruguay or France or anywhere else. Um, so that makes it challenging. And some of our labels, I, I will say, are not well understood. So I will just add, um, I think the more that you can get what we say in English from the horse's mouth and, you know, purchase directly from producers and ask the questions um, about 
how things are produced and um, you know even we have opportunities to visit some of those farms and see it for yourself. Um, th that is also I think a, a good perspective to have as a consumer is to ask and to purchase local when you can. In our country most every major now grocery store chain has some amount of local so it's becoming more greater in the in the supply chain but you still also need to ask i would say at the grocery store level i read once it takes about 12 people asking the produce manager for something different for the the store to respond and so we have a responsibility as well thank you thank you thank you absolutely we can ask it's like we voted with our dollars and we can certainly ask wherever we're going, especially if they're frequent stores that you go to. They know your face. They know they know what you even like most of the time. So you can easily ask for those kinds of products and 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 also bring in new education and knowledge to them so that they're thinking about it differently. I think that's how our stores here in New England shifted by the conversations with with science and with eaters, the combination of making those shifts. So thank you for that question, because we all need to be thinking about that as we're just going through our day to day and eating and nourishing our spirits and our souls. There's a question here, and I think it comes back to policies and practices, and we're thinking about government and some of the funding barriers, economic barriers, and supporting the transitioning farmers and ranchers to be more sustainable in what we think about and that inclusive and social relevant way. And if you have any anything to add and offer when we're thinking about how can our governments and how how can policies support that effort? Uh, I was just going to go back to one of the things I mentioned um, in the Food Policy Council, something that's happening not just, of course, in North Carolina, but across our nation and perhaps internationally, I'm not sure. Uh, but the idea of um, the general citizen working together in their own community to not only, uh, well, to understand the food system and the food system challenges, so agriculture, food insecurity, um, uh, um, equity in the food system, and to, as a community, address this. And I think that is one thing that is I, I find so positive. Um, working together with uh, the local officials and uh, who the food policy councils are is having representation that's across the food system. So we have people that are representing farmers or farmers themselves and uh, scientists or the extension agents together with public health and maybe even waste management as well, kind of that whole donut view of the food system and people that represent the expertise um, and interest too. Uh, and so we talk about that's like at the grassroots level and then raising that at the state and then raising that at the national level. But I, I think it's very hard to do the opposite sometimes is changing the national or federal programs. It's, you know, we, we start with what's around us is what I would say as individuals may be the most accessible for us. Yeah. Dr. Karnak, did you? Yeah, my, my God. yes, well, not, not very much to add, they, they just, uh, uh, say that in fact of course we if we, we want to support something uh, from a political point of view there are of course uh, the the legal constraints that can help in some way uh, but also as as Michel said the information communication involvement of actors into into common thinking is is one thing uh, uh, one one of the of the of the levers uh, is uh, not to be neglected is the um, neglected sorry is the um, the, the financial uh, driver and uh, you, as, as we all know uh, agri agriculture is is sustained by many direct or indirect subsidies but it's always subsidized in every country and uh, well in in Europe we have the this uh, common agricultural policy that represents in fact the the major part in sometimes of the of the 
uh, of the farmer's salary. And th this, uh, this kind of things can be also, the, this, this, this subsidies, subsidy uh, tool can be used uh, to, 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 uh, to, um, to postpone uh, criteria that, like those we, we are speaking about. And uh, of course, this can be done, but uh, sometimes there is some resistance. And in France, we have some uh, protests <laughs> as uh, the European Commission wanted to include some environmental uh, components in, the, in these uh, subsidies. So it's not an easy way, but it's a way. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, we're talking about this transition and support for farmers and ranchers. I just wanted to, and in the chat earlier, there was an article dropped in there. And it's the food system narratives to end hunger, executive versus regenerative. And it's really talking about the unsustain unsustainable nature of our industrial agriculture and offers new narrative associated with regenerative agricultural systems, such as agroecology and food sovereignty. So please take a look at that. And with that, I would love when we talk about what kind of advice, there was a question here of somebody that really wanted to move from uh, industrial to eco, eco ecology, agroecology. So is there any advice when we're thinking about how they could bring that in, you know, in a process transition uh, to that way, what what might you offer them? And I th think and think of these as your your closing words of advice <laughs> that you would give them uh, as they're on this journey. I'll start with um, kind of the answer I had before, but the challenges, but I think it's the opportunities is changing a bit of the mindset. So when I've worked with producers that are on a more conventional path and we're looking at trying to adopt a new practice, um, it's sometimes our agriculture can be reactive. Um, we have this pest, we must control it in some way. Um, versus in, I think, stepping back with agroecology, it's why do we have this pest or why do we have this particular pro problem and looking at it holistically and looking at it over the long term. So that switch, I think, needs to happen at the very, that's the first step I would say. Um, and then the second step is it's hard. It, there's a lot of information that you need to answer mm -hmm. that why. And so reaching out, um, we have, whether it's in maybe a, a extension agents or those that work with producers mm -hmm. or researchers, I'm amazed at how much is online and on YouTube. You have to be a little critical with that too and see where it's coming from. But um, I'll turn it over to um, Dr. Corna. Oh, thank you. I, I, I could not say <laughs> I could not say much better. Uh, so I, I think that um, uh, the, the the challenge we're speaking about engaging uh, people and uh, young people, uh, students and uh, researchers in this in this transition is something that both uh, needed, but because obviously the 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 the, the limits of the earth. Can, 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 we cannot go beyond so, 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 some limits. So, so it's, it's just needed. Uh, and, but it's also not uh, a punishment. It, it, it's, it's, it's really exciting. It's exciting on the scientific point of view because we have to, to uh, uh, I say, uh, to, to, to rewrap uh, our, our uh, way of doing science, our thinking, we have to extend our connections to others, to, to people from other uh, uh, horizons, from other landscapes, and uh, and connect also people which are not involved in science. So in, in terms of, uh, of scientific um, uh, well, procedure and, uh, and approach, it's, it's, it's very exciting because it's quite new, as Karen said at the very beginning of the, of the meeting. And I think that for, for people also, young people engaging into agriculture or actor which are uh, doing some conversion pro, from industrial to agroecological, it, it's, it's also uh, something that is 
exciting at different point of view. First, it's not economically so so uh, so bad. It, it it often leads to improvement for especially for the family farmers, and just is the it maybe it it adds one um, one additional component to the thinking and uh, and the life of, of these people, which is meaning, and meaning in something that. Uh, that uh, is good to reintroduce in the in the way we work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I this conversation and this dialogue with all the community has been demonstrating just the importance of and the critical way we need to move through this in our understanding, our interdependence, our intersectionality, our innovation, integration, all of that together is what's going to be able to move uh, the science and make it more visible in our work, in our transformation. And in both our countries, we're seeing that so visible and so, so significant. And it's all about the science, but it's all about the people, the science and the people, the science and community in community together. So would love for you all to keep that, that kind of both end together and continue to think about ways to bring in the community in the science, because it does build advocacy, builds champions, builds ambassadors, builds, 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 and um, we call them accomplices in what we're trying to make happen. So I'd love to share a quote. Um, it was Cita Chavez, uh, founder of the National Farm Workers Association in 1962. And his, he joined the Agricultural Workers Organizing Committee in its first strike against grape growers in California. And just really looking at the, the farm workers, again, people, people engage in this agriculture work we do. And thinking about it as his quote is, the fight is never about grapes or lettuce, it's always about people. It's always about people. So as we're doing the science and in the spirit of science and the knowledge of science and the health of science, we are always weaving in because we, we're thinking of the earth, you know, the, the health of the earth and the health of our people, again, intertwined, interconnected. So thank you for being a part of this as we are all people that must continue to fight for the planet and all the best for you for a happy Earth Day. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you all. Bye then.